Hello, dear students. Welcome to the Memoni. Myself, Ratikya, your biology SM. So, in this video lecture, we will be concentrating. We will be studying on the animal kingdom chapter. Okay. So, in the last videos and all, we have discussed about the plant kingdom. So, after plant kingdom, today we will be concentrating on the animal kingdom. So, this video lecturer will be on the animal kingdom. So, where I will be discussing about the basis of the classification and some of the basic information before getting into the classification of animals. So, yeah, moving to the series. So, this is all about the basis of classification. So, Basis of classification in sense, how we are going to classify the living organisms. So that is what we need to concentrate. So in what way we are going to differentiate the animals based on the structure and form of different animals, right? So there have been fundamental features that we are going to consider. So that is variations and all that we are going to considered uh, in all the organisms. So variations in relation to arrangement of cells. One thing is arrangement of cells. And the second one, the cells, then body, then we have symmetry. Right, then nature of the coulomb. After the, the pattern of arrangements or the, you know, pattern of the digestive system, circulatory system. Pattern of digestive. Then. Circulatory system. Okay as well as their reproduction behavior. So in these things, based on uh, considering these system or these futures, you know, we basically classify the living organisms. So this is how we normally classify and that is what we are going to discuss about. So coming to the level of organization, as you can see in the level of organization, Yes. In level of organization, what happens through all the members of the animal kingdom, they are multicellular. Even though they are multicellular, so they do not exhibit the same pattern of the arrangement of the cells. Okay. I mean, the same pattern of arrangement of the cells will not be seen in each and every organism in the same manner. So this thing you need to keep in your mind. So for example, agar aap logo ne, like if you take an example of sponges. So here the cells are arranged. How the cells are arranged? Cells are arranged very loosely. Okay. So cells are arranged loosely in sponges. And if you take, uh, so this is one length. This is one cellular level of organization. Then they exhibit, uh, since the cells are loosely arranged, so that's why they exhibit what kind of organization here, level of organization. Cellular level of organization. So this is all about the sponges. Even though they are multicellular, that means they are made up of more than one cell. But still, what kind of organization you will be seeing, how the entire body function has been taken place. So it is through the cells. That means it, it normally exhibit what? Cellular level of organization. So this is one point. In some other animal, like if you go up like even in some higher thing, you know. So in... Coolienterates. So in the coolienterates, what you will be seeing, cells are arranged somewhat complex. So here you will be seeing the arrangement of cells 
are complex. So in what way? Here the cells perform a, a you know, same function, but in an arranged manner. So that means the cells normally functions uh, performs the same function as cellular level, but in an arranged manner. Matlab yaha par cells are not independent. Okay. So they are arranged together and it performs a particular function. So cells arranging together we normally called as tissues. So abhi am log uh, in organisms ko like what we can define. They show what level of organization tissue level of organization right so it normally shows tissue level of organization so these two things is very much clear again in higher animals again if you go so still in a higher level of organisms or animals you will be seeing the organ level of organization that is organ systems that we see organ level can be exhibited they will be exhibited in higher animals so where one is basically you will be seeing these types of thing in plathi elementus okay in platinum elementus and other higher phylum or phyla phyla phylum Okay, this kind of things where tissues, they coordinate to form an organs. Okay, so together, tissues together, they coordinate to form an organ. And, e, and uh, each organs, you know, will be having its own specialized uh, function to be uh, made. So in animals such as, in animals such as if you take annelida, annelids or arthropoda, arthropods or even in molluscus okay even in molluscus if you see what kind of or molluscus and i think echinoderms as well as chordates uh yeah as well as chordates so here what they do is the organs have associated to form a specific uh, this thing specific function or specific functional system and they are being coordinated to each other so we normally call it as organ system level of organization okay so every performance being done by specific organs and each organs they coordinate with themselves to form a proper function so this is actually called as organ system level of organization clear so organ system in different animals they exhibit different functions so for example if you take plathi elementus if you take the plathi elementus as an example it in this okay when i'm talking about that digestive system it has only single opening in the outside of the body that serves as both mouth as well as anus. So therefore, your digestive system becomes incomplete. Digestive system is present, but it is incomplete. Because normally when I'm talking about digestive system, it should happen, it should have opening as well as ending that is mouth then at the end it there should be anus should be present so in between you will be seeing the digestive system right and intestine everything will be seen but in plathi elementus both are one itself so there is only opening and there is no end so opening itself where it is only going to perform as both mouth as well as anus so here what happens? The digestive system is incomplete. Okay. So hence it is an incomplete digestive system can be seen. So this is all about the level of organization. So based on right now, the way I have told you, 
So we have two types of system. Okay. So the even uh, based on digestive system, the way I have told you, there are again two uh, coming to the circulatory system. Just a minute. Yes, coming to the circulatory system. So there are two types can be seen in the organs. In some organisms, you will be seeing the open type. Whereas in some organisms or animal, you will be seeing the closed type of circulatory system. So what does this open type and closed type? See, we all know if you consider human beings, we all know how the blood normally pumps in our body, right? So in the open type, what happens is the blood pumps out of the heart, okay? And uh, the cells and tissues directly. Uh, the blood is going to pump out of, uh, out of the heart and whatever the cells, right, or tissues, okay, so tissues are directly, they are being bathed in it. Bathed in it, matlab, directly the blood is going to them. So there are no some connections and all are not there, okay. So tissues are bathed. Bathed in it, okay. So this is about open type of circulatory system. Matlab, yaha par, agar this is, uh, maan lo ya heart hai. So what is happening? The blood which is coming out, right? So there, the cells or tissues that you are seeing, they have been directly in contact with the uh, blood. So there is no way like the blood is reaching through some pipes or something. No, it's not like that. Directly, the cells are getting the blood. Once the, uh, this heart, it lets its blood. So this is all about the open type of circulatory system. So whereas coming to the closed type of circulatory system, so what kya hota hai? In human beings, in general, if you take human beings, uh, we human beings or animals, you know, right? So what happens in this type, what happens? The blood circulate throughout the body through series of vesicles, sorry, series of vessels of varying diameters. Matlab, unka size vary hota hai. Vesicles of varying diameters. Like we have arteries, you know the heart structure, right? So what all it consists? Arteries, then we have veins and the last one like another thing we have is capillaries so that means normally blood flows only in these pipes okay so through the arteries veins and capillary only the blood circulate throughout our body so how it is circulated in a closed system that means blood is actually circulating uh, throughout inside our body through the Closed system. That's why it is called as closed type of circulatory system. So this is all about the level of organization. I hope this is clear and uh, there is no doubt with it. Yes. So coming to the next part that is symmetry. Right. So symmetry we have. Uh, basically one is asymmetry, then we have radial symmetry and the bilateral symmetry. So what do you mean by asymmetry or asymmetrical symmetry? So or asymmetrical. So example is sponges. So if you take like if 
any plane that passes through the center that means that goes through the center and it is unable to divide into two equal halves so it is called as asymmetric you cannot divide the organism into two equal halves so that is called as asymmetric like in some sponges or uh, in amoeba and all what happens so they actually comes as asymmetry because you know they cannot be divided into t, uh, two equal halves because of structure itself it, it has no proper structure so you will be unable to divide them into two equal halves so that is called as asymmetry so the next one we have is radial symmetry then we have bilateral symmetry right so what do you mean by radial symmetry see what happens when any plane that passes through the center okay so any place that passes through the center and divide the organism into two equal halves of identical that means jab bhi aap kisi bhi angle se like when you pass the plane through the center okay so and if you cut them into any uh, from the center so it is going to divide into two identical half so that is called as radial symmetry so some of the examples for uh, that is all we normally call them as ra uh, yeah radial symmetry some of the examples for the radial symmetry are can you name them yes one thing is Cooley and Teratas, Tenophos, as well as Echinoderms. So these are some of the kind of, you know, body planes that can be seen. Like in starfish and all, you can see, like if you cut them into two equal halves, like anywhere, so you'll find an equal, uh, you know, identical halves. So this is all about the radial symmetry. So the next one is bilateral symmetry. See in bilateral symmetry, what happens? Animals such as Anilida, then arthropods and all, arthropods and even higher animals like we and all. So what happens is when a plane is passed through the Okay, uh, center. It can divide into identical half that is identical left as well as right half. So if this is left and this is right half itself. So only this much it can divide into identical right and left half. Okay. In only one plane that is only through this one plane only it can divide not on more planes like you have seen in radial symmetry so this kind of symmetry has been exhibited so which animals they are going to exhibit they come under bilateral symmetry now you cannot pass a plane in the middle or from here you won't get a similar okay similar half of the organism only when a plane is passed through the center that to only one plane is passed through the center then only you are going to get two half that is one left and one is right half so these kind of symmetries uh, the animals which exhibit these kind of symmetry so they come under what bilateral symmetry so i hope you are clear with bilateral symmetry now Next thing we have is the diploblastic and triploblastic organization. So what is this diploblastic and triploblastic organization? Anybody? No? See, before that, you should know there are two pictures where one common thing is you have ectoderm and endoderm, right? So what is ectoderm actually? Yes. Ectoderm in sense in the animals, okay, which the cells are arranged in two embryonic level. So we normally call them as ectoderm, where cells are 
arranged in two embryonic levels so they are called as yes ectoderm and internally externally as well as internally so you can see two embryonic level so this is one of the embryonic level so outer one is actually called as ectoda and inside also you can see the another embryonic level here so inside it is called as ectoda so cells are arranged in two embryonic level so the outer one is actually called as the ectoderm and inner is actually called as endoderm so in the middle you will be seeing two different types now so in the middle you will be seeing how much two different types what are there I'll, I'll say you see an undifferentiated layer that you see them in the middle okay will be present where in between the ectoderm as well as the endoderm so those animal okay the those animals in which the developing embryo has uh what do you say that uh, so this is like see in those thing where you will see uh, the middle layer is empty. That means So yeah, the next topic is the diploblastic and triploblastic organization. So when I'm talking about the diploblastic organization in general with the diplo as well as triplo. So what happens in animal, there will be two cells are arranged, right? So in which the cells are arranged in two embryonic layers. So cells are arranged in two embryonic layers so the outer one is actually called as ectoderm and the inner one is actually called as uh yeah so the endoderm so in between what happened there is a uh an internally clear so in between we get to have the mesoglia so mesoglia is an empty part well in between these two ectoderm and endoderm you will find an incomplete part so this is actually called as mesoglia. Okay. So now in the definition, an external endoderm is present and internal ectoderm, uh, endoderm is present, right? So externally ectoderm is there and internally the endoderm is split there. So they are actually called as diploblastic. Okay. So for example, in most of the coulomb, So most of the coleanterata, you will be seeing the diploblastic, uh, you know, level of organization can be seen. So in between, as I told, there will be an undifferentiated layer. So which is actually called as mesoglia. Okay. So this is all about the diploblastic. Now coming to the trip, uh, triploblastic organization. So those animal in which the developing embryo has the third germ layer. So third germ layer that is actually called as what? Mesoderm layer. So outer you will see the ectoderm, inner you will see the endoderm. In between there is the third germ layer. So which is actually called as what? Mesoderm. Okay. So that is where it is present in between the ectoderm as well as endoderm. So this is called as triploblastic organization or the animals which process these kind of organization are called as triploblastic animal. Yeah. So what is an example for the triploblastic animals? Some of like platy elementus. Platy elementus and another one till from platy elementus to Chordates, you will see this triploblastic level of organization. So this is all about the diploblastic and triploblastic. I hope you are clear. The next one is coulomb. So what do you mean by coulomb? Coulomb is nothing but 
प्रेजेंस ऑफ हा एब्सेंस ऑफ बॉडी कैविटी ओके सो वेर बिटवीन द बॉडी वॉल एंड द गट वॉल वेर बिटवीन द body wall and gut wall so it is actually called as coulomb that is the body cavity which is leaned by the mesoderm so you have seen right this is the place where mesoderm will be present so the body cavity in general when i am talking about coulomb the body cavity which is leaned by what mesoderm is actually called as coulomb and animals which normally possess coulomb right they are called as coulombates so the animals which possess the coulomb as body cavity they are called as coulombates example you will see annelida then molluscs arthropoda and echinodermatas and hemichordatas chordates they all come under the coulombates so this is clear to you now in some animals what happen the body cavity is not leaned by the mesoderm that is the middle layer okay instead the mesoderm is present but they are present as a mesoderm are present as some like scattered pouches in between the ectoderm and endoderm so these things such a body cavity okay possessed by them are possessed by the animal are called as pseudo coulomb yes so here what you can see is instead of coulomb what there are ectoderm endoderm in midville so there is mesoderm right so here you can see mesoderm is completely absent so the inst instead of mesoderm what is that the body cavity is leaned by the mesoderm now so they are called as coulombates but here instead of body cavity being leaned to the uh, you know like mesoderm here the mesoderm is present but that's present in the coulomb as what in the body cavity as scattered pouch like structure between the uh, this thing between what ectoderm as well as the endoderm so this kind of uh, you know uh, organization that actually called as pseudo coulomb or pseudo coulombates so this is clear to you so examples are ascii elementus clear so what about this thing that is the last one they are actually called called as a coulombates they are actually called as a coulombates so what are a coulombates see basically what happens the animal in which the body cavity is absent that is the body cavity is completely absent they are called as a coulombates so here you can see there is no body cavity it is completely absent so in most like plathi elementus you will be seeing this example that is a coulombates so this is all about the coulomb so one by one if i need to revise them first one we have seen about the coulombates the second one is all about the pseudo coulombates and the third one is all about the a coulombates so in coulombates what happens the animal possess the coulomb are called as coulombates whereas in pseudo coulombates the animal instead of possessing the complete coulomb what happen here the mesoderm you know they are present as a scattered pouches in between the ectoderm and endoderm so that kind is actually called a pseudo coulomb or pseudo coulombates now a coulombates in which you will be seeing the body cavity is completely absent so they are called as a coulombates so clear cool so next 
we will be talking about the segmentation. What do you mean by segmentation? Say in some animals, the body is external and internally divided into segments with a series of, uh, you know, some organs and all. For example, if you see in earthworm, what happens? The body shows the pattern called as metameric segmentation. And the phenomenon is actually called as meta Merism. So that is segmentation. Matlab, if you see an earthworm, you will see a different kinds of segments on the body. Right. So that is actually called as a segment or they show a pattern. So it is actually called as the metameric segmentation. And the phenomenon is actually called as metamerism. So this is all about the segmentation. In some of the animals, segmentation is present. So, what about the notochord then? See, notochord is mesodermally derived rod-like structure. Okay. They are mesodermally derived rod-like structure of formed on the uh, basically in back cell, like dorsal side, okay, during the embryonic development, you will see this notochord formed, formed on dorsal side. Dorsal side during uh, the embryonic development. This is clear. So during where? During the embryonic development. So you will see this thing. So that is all about the notochord. So animals with notochords are actually called as. So though animals which have notochords are actually called as. Uh, can you name like what it is called? Yes, chordates, right. And the animals which do not have the notochords are called non-chordates. So can you like suggest the names of chordates and non-chordates? So for non-chordates, porifera and echinodermata, so it comes under non-chordates and remaining rest, every animals, they comes under the chordates. Fine. So we will try to understand how the animals have been classified based on this all category now. Yeah, coming to the classification of animal. So based on their everything that is based on the level of organization, what kind of symmetry it shows, then its body cavity or coulomb. So they have been classified into so-called phylum. And uh, these things still here, you can see they the, they're like non chords. So what happens is here there have been how many phylums are there totally? The first phylum is Porifera, Uliantereta, Tenophora, Platyelementus, Ascheelementus, then Anilida, Arthropoda, Molluscus, Echinodermata, Hemichordata, and the last one is Chordata. So again, in core data, different classes are there. So that also we are going to study. So in coming video, that is in the coming next uh, lecture series, I'll be explaining everything till here. And in the last video, I'll be explaining about the core data and different classes of core data. So this is clear. So right now, what is your task is uh, before coming to the next lecture? So you should be very thorough of, about this table. Okay. So this is all about the animal classification.